Okay, we're going to do one more circuit analysis for a DC voltage source. And in this video, we're going to have an RLC circuit. We have a 10 volt DC source. We have two resistors and we have our L, our inductor, and our C, our capacitor. And we're going to, capacitor, excuse me. And we're going to look at this circuit and analyze this circuit for two different points in time. And we're going to answer the following eight questions, current, voltage, and charge for the components in this circuit immediately after the switch has been closed, which we call time equals zero. And then, of course, we're going to do that for after the switch has been closed for a long time, this being our switch right here. Okay, so we have two resistors, an 8 and a 4. We have an inductor L. Inductors resist changes in current. We have a capacitor, and capacitors resist changes in voltage. And we're going to look at this switch right now, this circuit right now, for immediately after the switch has been closed, T equals time 0. All right, so we're going to close the switch right like that. And as soon as we close the switch, this inductor starts to resist the changes in the current. And it produces a back EMF, a self-induced voltage to do that. And when the switch is closed, it, the greatest self-induced voltage is across that inductor. And the voltage is such that the current through this whole branch, through this 8 and through this inductor, is zero. So right when the switch is closed, the current through this branch of the circuit is zero due to that self-induced voltage. And the voltage has the polarity opposite of the battery because it's resisting the buildup in that current. Okay? Now, there's no current through here, but there is current flowing through this outer branch, through this outer loop with the 4 ohm resistor and the capacitor. So the next thing we're going to do is we get the current through the battery. Well, the current is the voltage divided by the resistance well, the voltage is 10 volts, and the resistance is just this 4 ohm resistor. So 10 divided by 4 means that we have a current through the battery and a current through the 4 ohm resistor of 2.5 amperes. Immediately after the switch has been closed, what is the charge on the capacitor? Well, it takes time for charge to build up on the capacitor. So immediately after the switch has been closed, just like there's no current here, there's no charge built up on the capacitor. If there's no charge on the capacitor, then there's no voltage across the capacitor. Okay? Now, what is the voltage across this 8 ohm resistor? Well, there's no current through the 8 ohm resistor. And for resistors, the voltage is the current times the resistance. Well, there's no current, then there can be no voltage across the 8 ohm resistor. What is the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor? Well, the 4 ohm resistor has 2.5 amps of current flowing through it. 2.5 times 4 is 10, so there's 10 volts, or there's a voltage drop of 10 volts across that 4 ohm resistor. Now, this is possibly the most interesting thing. What's the voltage across the inductor? Well, we have three branches that are really in parallel. We have this branch, this branch, and this branch. The voltage across those parallel branches has to be the same. This is 10, so there's 10 volts here. Okay, now we have 10 volts here because we have 10 volts across the 4 and nothing across the capacitor. We have no voltage here, so there has to be, still has to be 10 volts across this branch. If there's no voltage here, there's no volts across the 8 because there's no current through that 8 ohm resistor, then all 10 volts, okay, all, all those voltage, all the voltage has to be across the inductor. So the voltage across the inductor is 10 volts. And we might put a minus sign here, not because it's less than zero or because it's a vector, because the polarity of the voltage across the inductor is opposite the battery because it has a self-induced voltage that's trying to resist or that is resisting the change in current or the buildup in current, okay? So that's all those values for immediately after the switch has been closed. Now, let's look at all those values again for when the switch has been closed for a long time. And we're gonna go in a different order. I thought this would make a little bit more sense. But after the switch has been closed for a long time, the current through the inductor is no longer changing. So there's no more self-induced voltage. So there's no voltage drop now after 
switch has been closed for a long time, there's no voltage drop across the inductor. The inductor just acts like a short or a long way, or just a regular wire. So once down here, this is the first thing, number eight, there's no voltage across the inductor. Okay? Now, this branch is still in parallel with this battery, but it's a 10 volt battery. So where is all the voltage? There still has to be 10 volts across here. Well, there's no voltage here. Then here in number six, all that voltage, 10 volts across that um, resistor, that eight ohm resistor, that voltage drop of 10 volts. Okay, you can see from Kirchhoff's loop rule, a positive, a gain of 10, a drop of 10 equals zero. All right, now let's see, what is the next thing we're going to do? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the current, okay? Because there's no resistance to the current anymore from this. There's no resistance, there's no um, uh, resistance to the change in the current across this inductor. There's no voltage here. So now the current is simply the voltage divided by the resistance. The voltage is 10, the resistance is 8, and that means here for number 1 that the current through this branch is 1.5 amperes. All right? So now I think we're going to move on to this branch. I think we've done everything for this branch. Okay, now let's talk about capacitors. Okay, after the switch has been closed for a long time, the capacitor is fully charged. And when the capacitor is fully charged, there's no more current flowing through this branch. And that means that the current through the 4 ohm resistor is now 0 amperes. Okay, well from Ohm's law, if there's no current through that 4 ohm resistor, then there can be no voltage across that 4 ohm resistor. So that means that the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor is 0 volts, number 7. Okay, so now let's look at the capacitor. The capacitor is fully charged. There's no more current. There's no voltage here. Then the voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to the voltage of the battery. And then here for number 5, the voltage across the capacitor is now 10 volts. Okay? So you can see you have 10 volts here, 10 volts here, 10 volts here. Okay? Parallel circuit elements have the same, we have the same voltage across them. Okay, what about the charge? Well, the charge across the capacitor, the charge on the capacitor, is Q equals C times V. C is the capacitance, 0 0.5. The voltage is 10. 0 0.5 times 10 means that there's 5 coulombs of current stored on that capacitor. Okay, we have one more thing. We have the battery, the current through the battery. The current through the battery is going to be equal to the current through this whole branch right here because there's no more current flowing here. All the current is flowing here. And the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So just like the 8 ohm resistor, the current through the battery is 1. 0.5 amperes. All right, so there you go. That's all those values for after the switch has been closed for a very long time. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up right there. Click thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Do that right now. Subscribe to my channel. You will get all of my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a nice positive comment. Positive comments. I love positive comments. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.